day has arrived for our trip over to Tassie. Ew! We had hitched the van up the night before, so only a few small pack-up jobs, then we were on our way, nice and early. As you can see, it was still pitch black outside. We snuck out the boom cake just after 5am. Quick top up on fuel, and we were on our way. We were a 40 minute drive away from the port. We had planned to have plenty of time up our sleeves so we could give Rusty a good walk before boarding. Check-in started at 6.30am and we were at the gate at 6.34am. Easily 50 vehicles ahead of us already. We were ushered down to our first checkpoint, the quarantine point. We were all good. Check. Hey guys, so we're just about to board the Spirit of Tasmania. We're just in the queue at the moment. Yeah. The ship is just over there. So excitement levels and nerves are setting in. Uh, just obviously just a little bit worried about Rusty traveling, but everyone says she should be fine in the kennel. So fingers crossed. It's a quick trip and we see her on the other side, all safe and sound. But yeah, we'll, we'll keep you posted. We sat in line on the dock for about 40 minutes until they started boarding onto the ship at around 7.30 a.m. Eventually moving up and making it to the ticket booth. Got our official tickets now. Check out these three combis boarding to our right. By now, we had a good look at our tickets and saw that we were on deck 5. If you have a dog, generally they will put you on deck 3 or deck 5, as this is where the kennels are located. Once parked up, our first and main priority was to settle Rusty into a kennel. We were the first ones there, so we got our pick of the kennels. There was a staff member there to ensure you had chose the right size kennel for your dog. We put the bed she travels in in the car with inside of the cage and settled her in. Ames put a sign on the front with details about Rusty and whom to contact if something was wrong. Rusty is our fur child and Ames was so concerned with leaving her. After leaving Rusty, we headed up to the decks to settle ourselves in. We had opted not to book a cabin and just reserved ourselves two recliners for our day sail. The time went relatively quickly and before too long, we could see Davenport. Our deck was one of the first to be called, so we raced on down to pick up Rusty. It was a bit like the Titanic, everyone rushing to get off. I think it's safe to say she was happy to see us. And so were we to see her. We then headed straight to our vehicles. Hey guys, just back in the car. We made it. Yes, all safe and sound. We're so worried about Rusty, but she is fine, thank God. 
So now we're just waiting to start our engines, get off this ship, and go check out Tazzy. Woo! Woo! Once off the ship, we had to pass through another quarantine checkpoint, then it was full steam straight to the fourth camp to set up for the night. We had dinner at the local pub and then headed to bed. The next day we headed to Lake Gardner, our first free camp. Lake Gardner is located 30 minutes northwest of Cradle Mountain and a great camp to base ourselves for a few nights while exploring the surrounds. We had riverside views and set up a fire while chatting the night away to our new neighbours. The following day was perfect weather to head to the famous Cradle Mountain. We left Frosty asleep in our van back at camp while we day tripped it in. Got our tickets and jumped on the shuttle bus straight to Dove Lake. It was so bloody cold. I think we underestimated the climate here. We each had two jumpers on and we're still freezing our butts off. We did opt not to do any of the major walks and just have a look around at most of the stops. When we hopped off the shuttle bus a bit further on, we saw wombats. We saw three Roman on the grassy hills and this guy was super placid. You could get pretty close to him. We then headed down to the Enchanted Falls walk and saw this guy on the side of the boardwalk. On our drive back to camp, we had our first near miss for the trip. Just goes to show you always need to be alert. Check this guy out. Halfway into our lane as we headed around the bend. Naughty naughty. Lucky we weren't going fast or the Nav's bull bar would have got a tickle. We then just relaxed around camp for the remainder of the day. Once dust fell, we had some special visitors. Check these guys out. A paddy melon across the river from our camp. Then we looked down to see our first wild platypus. Unreal. The next day, there were two small waterfalls nearby. We thought we'd go and check them out. It was a pretty steep incline to get to the initial track, but the first falls were very pretty and we were the only ones there. We sat and watched them for a few minutes before moving on to the next one. Both walks were nice, different things to walk on and see as you weave your way through the rainforest.
We arrived to the next waterfall and unfortunately it wasn't flowing. Looks like it had recently dried up. We headed back to camp, picked up Rusty and went to Levin Canyon. A nice short dog friendly walk. We had been told to do the track anti-clockwise, so you can go down the stairs and not up them. The weather wasn't the best and Rusty was a little hesitant on the viewing platform. Once Kurt picked her up and held her, she was fine. We then headed down the 637 steps to the next viewing platform. They have these seats every now and then, which tell you how many steps you have left. It just started to rain as we reached the second platform. We got a family happy snap and then scooted back to the car. On the way back, we saw this little fella on the side of the road. After a great three nights at this camp, we moved on and headed back up towards the coast. We stopped in at this spot outside of Penguin for a rest before moving on. The weather had turned terrible and rain predicted to set in for a good few days so we headed straight to the popular Boat Harbour Free Camp to try and nab a spot. Our plan had worked and we had our pick of a few spots when we arrived. We set up and bunkered down for two days while this rain set in. On the third day we saw a break in the rain and decided to shoot out to Stanley for the day. When we parked up, it was blue skies thankfully. We opted to do the short, steep zigzag track up to the top of the nut. They were not wrong, it was steep. They did have chairlifts you could buy tickets for, but hey, we needed the exercise and it was great to get the heart rate up first thing in the morning. She was quite windy on top, hold on to your hats. After our walk, we treated ourselves to coffee and a warm bacon and egg focaccia. We chose this place as it had the best reviews on TripAdvisor. We then went and saw a few more sites before heading back to camp. I went out for an afternoon fish and lo and behold, dun dun dun! First fish catch of uh... Tasmania, it's a blue nose Rasi. Whoa! I've never. They said they're alright eating, so. This one is a fighter. Um, so we'll eat him, we'll um, see what he tastes like. 
And if it's any good, we'll catch some more, but if not, I'll throw them back in. Later on, our neighbour caught one too. How good is that? Next day, Rocky Cape was on our list of things to go and see. Hey guys, we're just in Tasmania at the moment at uh, Rocky Cape, which is north uh, west of Tassie. Yeah, we're going to go check out a few trails today, have a look around the place, and then we've got, uh, we're have got we going to go meet some Instagram friends uh, for lunch at 1 o'clock, so that should be good, Chris and V. Finally get to catch up with them in person, we're always messaging them on the Insta. So yeah, that'd be good, and then after that we'll probably head back to, the, back to camp, to Boat Harbour. And hopefully the bloody sun comes out so we can go for a swim. Yeah, I've been waiting for it. It's just been terrible weather the last few days. We're terrible. Itching for a swim. So yeah, let's get to it. We checked out the caves and lookouts around the lighthouse. The views were great of the coastline and once again it was a little bit windy. We saw this collection of gnomes on our way to Sisters Beach. It was quite amusing. Then headed off to Winard to meet up with some Instagram friends for lunch. After lunch we popped into the Table Cape for a look, another great vantage point of the coastline. Join us next time as we continue our Tassie trek and tackle the popular Western Explorer Road. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode.